Our season schedule templates are some of the most used and most loved templates we have on Gipper, but they can be a little bit more involved to create than some of the other templates that we've got. So today I'm going to share a few tips and tricks for creating these graphics that's going to help you actually make these in as little time as possible. So let's get started. First things first is actually finding the season schedule graphics that you want to use. So to do that, there's a few ways to search the dashboard. You can type in schedule into the search bar and that'll pull up all of the templates we have that are tagged with schedule. Another way that you can do this is use the filter options at the top, click on category dropdown and then scroll down to where we have schedules, select that filter and then hit apply and you'll get the same search pretty much populated um, just like we did when we typed in the search bar. So you can scroll through these and you'll see there's a variety of options here. Don't forget you can actually favorite the ones that you like to use um, for later and that way you'll have them easily accessible on the top of the template dashboard um, when you go make your schedules in the future. So that's a couple ways to do it. One additional way I want to share is this advanced options tab and what you can do is search by the number of events that you need. So if you have a season schedule you're probably going to need a lot of events right so you can search as many as let's see how much it goes to here 30 events let's just say that's good for now you hit apply and that'll pull up any template that has room to fit up to 30 events you'll see a lot of rosters on here but we also have a schedule again up to 32 events and so on and so forth so a couple ways you can search for schedule templates Jumping into tips and tricks, there are a few that are applicable to every single season schedule template we have available on Gipper. So tip number one is to start up here in the number of events tab. Every season schedule graphic is pretty much going to have one of these. We call this a dynamic field. The reason being, if you adjust this drop down number here, you'll see the template automatically adjusts. So let's say you only have 20 events to go through for the season schedule, update this to 21st. This is going to make this sidebar a lot more manageable. You'll see why in a second. Tip number two is to use the logo database as much as possible. If you scroll on the sidebar here, you are going to notice that there is a logo field for every single logo that is on this template. And if you are uploading each opponent logo from scratch every time, you'll be here for a while. So to make it faster, search the logo database to see if we already have your opponent logo pre-populated into our platform. So for example, I can search for a state, Texas, and see what comes up there. I can also search for just kind of the team name. So let's say I'm looking for the Warriors. We can search that. And then if there's one that I see that's right, I can click that and you'll see it populate in the template here. Now, if you do not see a result for the school or organization you are looking for, email your customer champion and attach your season schedule with your opponent names because we will go ahead and find those logos for you and upload them to our database so you have them for the future. This is going to save you so much time, not just on this template, but on every other template that you make. Tip number three is less of a tip and more of a PSA. So if you look on your sidebar, you'll see a section called legend colors. Open that up. And what this does is controls these home, away, neutral, and scrimmage options that you see here. And these are color coded, as you can see, um, to the elements alongside the event. Now, it would be a super big pain if you had to go in and actually change the color of all of these elements. So we solved that for you. So what you can do is set your home and away color. So let's just set the home is Gipper Green and the away is our navy. And we'll keep the neutral and the scrimmage color the same. And now what we can do is actually just choose the location of every single event from the drop down. So let's say location one is home, then we are away, then we're neutral, then we're away again and then home, so on and so forth. That way, if you have your schedule handy next to you, you can just look and run down the list and say home, away, home, away, and use the dropdowns to actually change the colors of those bubbles. And that way, that saves you a ton of time. Tip number four is actually my favorite, and it's because I sort of discovered this a little bit recently, I'm afraid to admit. But if you go into the text tab, you'll see a new tab right underneath that says group settings. Open that up. What this does is controls the text format, so the color and the font and the drop shadow and spacing of all of the grouped text elements. Let me show you what I mean. So this main group is in white and all these other groups are in white, so it's a little hard to see right now. But if I change the color of this group to Gipper Green, see what happens here. All of the event titles or headings, whatever you want to call them, change color. So we can do the same thing with for example, the secondary group, let's change this to, I don't know, gray instead. You see that change happens to every single subhead of these events. 
Now, this is huge because maybe you've been painstakingly actually going through every single text box and adjusting the format and the color one by one. I'm here to tell you you don't have to do that. Change your workflow to update the group settings if you want to edit any of the text on this template. It's going to change your life. Now, the last trick I want to show you is specific to this football schedule template that uses this fun helmet imagery. Basically, what's going to happen is we're going to be able to change the color of each of these helmets using the eyedropper tool. Let me just demonstrate. We'll start with the big one here because this is technically our home team helmet. So I'm just going to put in a stock logo and I'm going to use the crop tool to adjust the size of this. That looks good. Great. So then I'm going to click on the helmet element on the canvas. And then what I'm going to do is click on the eyedropper tool. And then from there, I'm going to select the color from my logo that I'd like to use for the helmet. Let's use this silver. And you can see there that the helmet changed colors based on the color I selected with the eyedropper tool. Now, if I wanted to change the color, I could do the same thing and select this orange and you'll see it change there. Now, this is cool for this helmet, but here's why it's gonna be such a time saver for the rest of these. You're just gonna be able to use the logo database to find your opponent logo, and then you can change the helmet based on the logo colors. This is gonna save you time because it means that you don't have to go searching for your opponent official colors. Let me just show you what this, what this means. So we'll hop into logo number one. Let's just say I'm a Texas school, so I'm just gonna search Texas in the logo database and see if I can find one of my opponents Let's say UT Dallas is an opponent of mine. I'll select that. And then this gets a little small, but click on the helmet on the canvas, click on the eyedropper tool. And then once again, just hover until you find the color that you want. I want this green, I think. So I'll click on the green. And now you've got an opponent helmet that looks hopefully similar to what it would look like in real life. And we'll just keep running down the line here again and do a few more to show you what effect this has. We'll search Texas again. Let's say, Let's grab this guy. We'll do the same process. Click the helmet on the canvas, click the eyedropper tool, and then hover as much as possible until you get the color that you want. Looking good. Let's go again for the third one. One more for good measure. Let's go with this one. And again, click on the helmet, click on the eyedropper, and hover until you get the color you want for this purpose. Let's go black and see what that looks like. Amazing. So you repeat this process for the rest of the schedule, and then you have an awesome graphic that showcases your opponent helmets in a really fun fashion. So an upgrade from just a logo, now you've got this awesome football helmet to use.